Hello. How are you? Hi, Kirsten. Hi again. Uh, we have again our guest, Olga. Uh, Olga Vargas, the CMO of Verni Software. <laughs> um, we were just talking in chapter one about uh, her leadership skills. And now we have a few more questions to ask her uh, as a Puerto Rican, a Latin woman who has struggled to get up there, or maybe she didn't struggle. She just used her inner compass, how Kirsten says, and um, her life, her resilience. Uh, I don't know. I mean, we have a lot of questions that we couldn't ask her in chapter one. How are you, Olga? Hi, how are you, Annie? Hi, Kirsten. Hi, Olga. I was um, just hearing your the the previous talk we had. I was struck by your resilience in um, you know hearing how people at times attempted to block you or not accept who you are. And I was wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about resilience. What have been some challenges that have really taken you to your core, where you've really had to question who you are and how you overcame those? Hmm. Yes, um, so it is not easy um, for a woman and a woman of color um, to step into leadership positions in the United States or in any place, you know? Um, and I remember one time my first uh, leadership position, the first time I manage people. And it has been so long that it's no longer in my resume so I can talk about it. Um, the, I was uh, the director of marketing and I was pretty young. And um, I was told by the president of the organization that um, I needed to see a way to get the females in my team that were pregnant out of the company because they were not going to uh, be productive anymore. And um, I also learned um, that I was pregnant. I was in, you know, just newlywed and I was pregnant. And of course I didn't want to say anything. And I didn't know how to manage that. It was, it was one of those oh my God, what I am going to do. I, and also look at these very talented women who are losing their jobs because they are going to be mothers. And, and it was really a terrible position. At that time, Texas Instruments uh, was looking for me because I met them before, years before. And they started looking for me and they offered me a job. And the job... Um, ended up paying a lot less than what I was making. Um, but I remember the HR person telling the, the HR person, you know, I know I don't have to tell you this, but I am three months pregnant. And the HR person said, congratulations. We have excellent benefits for new moms. Oh. That told me, oh my God, there is, there are companies out there that, can understand, that understand the value of women and mothers in the workplace. And that told me that, first of all, I don't need to take it. <laughs> I don't need to, I don't need to compromise what I want to do and who I am because other people want to impose those things on me. And also I don't need, I can, there are other places that you can go that it is not, you don't have, you can try to change culture, but you don't have to be, you know, David against Goliath. You don't have to do those things. There, there are always options to other places. And, and the funny part was that even though they pay me less, um, I quickly doubled that salary and I was happy. I was a new mom. I had great benefits and a growth path for my career. So um, I think that that not, not compromising in, in, in that sense, compromising in other sense, you know, when you are when you're wrong or, or when when other people have other thoughts, sure. But compromising on whether people value you as a woman as a Latina, as a mother, 
I, I, I learned that you don't. Amazing, Olguita. Um, Kirsten, I was just remembering, um, me and Olga were roommates, remember? We were living in the Spanish house. I don't remember the street name, do you remember? Rosemont, I don't remember. Rosemont Avenue, yeah. yes. And I remember her just like that. I mean, she had this out of the box thinking constantly. And I was amazed. I mean, it was, wow. I mean, it was the 80s and she already had that thought. And it was like, for us coming from Ecuador or from Peru, that kind of thinking was like, wow, she's a little bit crazy. She's a designer, but it was amazing. But you kept on going with that out of the box thinking process. And now she is where she is. So um, we found each other again. What was it, Olga? A year ago, two years ago, we started talking. A couple of years ago, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we've been telling each other all the stories how we ended up here. Um, well, I'm in Washington DC, she's in Oregon, Kirsten in Miami, but we have to get together, the three of us, <laughs> and have these kind of talks. Um, what were our dreams when we were 20-something, when we were in our teenage years, and now we ended up each in what we chose. I mean, I started studying psychology. Olga, you were studying design and um, you ended up in marketing. I mean, that's I was a studying everything. Like I said, you know, I studied, I graduated with three majors and I don't know how many minors. Mm -hmm. um, I was studying uh, literature. I was studying um, design. I was studying art history and also communications. So like I said before, um, I was a late bloomer. I, I, I didn't, I was more interested in learning, in, in understanding the world and understanding communications and understanding literature and art and all those things than in having a, or a, than at becoming a chief marketing officer. And uh, I mean, I, and I think that being open to learning new things and being open to see the world in different ways and being open to see patterns where people don't see is something that makes me a stronger person and a stronger leader because I'm able to, to take a look and a wide look and then understand what's happening so I can put together good plans and a good vision and something that is exciting for the people and something that, that they can see, oh, maybe, yes, maybe she's right. And, and, and I think that that helped a lot, but it was the roundabout way. Yeah. And <laughs> you do a lot about your family. Kirsten, go. <laughs> you you got Kirsten right now. But that roundabout way, I think is so important to point out um, that we often don't know why we're pulled into a certain direction. And it's so important to trust that pull because we never know 20 years down the line that might be a vital, vital component, a vital ingredient that is going to help us in our leadership, that's going to help us in our relationship. So I absolutely love that you trusted so deeply whatever called you, whatever you authentically felt pulled to do it sounds like you followed that and you didn't let expectations from others or from how society has been framed to limit that, uh, that impulse. So, amazing. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I mean, I, it, I, it reminds me of when I was in Puerto Rico because I was studying all these disparate things, you know, and, and I remember people saying, well, you should, you're, you're bright, you should be a scientist or an accountant or a lawyer, something that would give you money. Why are you studying all these weird things? I mean, I remember taking, I don't know how many courses of psychology of death, you know? And, um, and I, I didn't have a good, I didn't have a good uh, explanation on why I wasn't studying these things to make money. I, I wanted to understand people and what moves people. And, and you know, when you're in marketing, that it is all about is your customer and what they think and how they think and their needs and how you can provide solutions for them. So 
So it all came back, like exactly like you said, it all came back to, to make me a strong um, professional. And a visionary. In order to be visionary, you have to have explored um, a multiplicity of angles from something and to find, like you said, patterns that you would not necessarily think to connect, you know, art with technology or, you know, finding different venues. So it sounds like that ability to, to trust really did, you know, really, really did serve your jobs much later on. Yes. What would you say um, in terms of what your passion has become now, where you are in life now, what is that? You know, um, one of the things that I am really invested in, and, and it has to do with my job, but, but I am so invested and I'm trying to, to put it everywhere is I discovered that I can do good in the world, world and do well professionally. They're not mutually exclusive. So I am on this path to really open the eyes of education for underrepresented groups and for women to, to, to close that achievement gap. So while I am creating, of course, marketing programs that sell more products, one of the things that I'm really, really working on is how can the public school system in the United States be more equitable and really give opportunities to all of our children, different abilities, um, different ways of learning, more females in STEM education, more people of color being able to get degrees or have fulfilling paths. So, so I am, that, that is where my, my energy, a big part of my energy is going is from a position of leadership and a position of power, um, being able to do great business, of course, but doing good. And that is, that is not, I, I can't compromise on that one. That, that is where I wanna be and, and, and continue my, my career in. Wow, Olga for mayor, you must love politics. <laughs> One question and the last question, Olga, why don't you tell us a little bit about your family, the family you grew up with, because from what you're saying, it seems like uh, they were really like you, your father, your mother, this out of the box thinking, very liberal. And uh, I don't know if you followed that or you were different than them. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? How, sure. how um, so... They were not very liberal. Uh, my father was quite traditional from a traditional family, um, except that even though it was a traditional family, they never put um, they never put um, uh, limits to the the women. Like all the women in my in my father's family acquire an education, which was and all of his aunts also acquired an education. So that was liberal, but they were not liberal in the sense of socially liberal. My father, like I, you know, he was gay and he felt that he needed to get married in order for him to, to be accepted in society. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there were a lot of issues with that, of course, with us growing up. My mother, um, she comes from a, a very religious background, but she also was fearless. And she, you know, I remember being in high school and my mom getting her master's degree and her PhD, you know, so I remember her working really hard to continue learning. Then when she was 54, she decided that she wanted to build a marina with her then husband. And it was the first green marina in, on the island in Puerto Rico. And now she is 78 and she manages the marina. She had to learn how to do accounting. She had to learn how to do these things. So, so this indomitable spirit, it's really, really 
uh, something, I guess, that I learned or I inherited from her, but, but it, it was not without pain. Because when you are like that in a society that doesn't like you to be like that, it's painful. So you have to say, okay, this is who I am and I make no apologies for who I am. I'm going to do what I want to do. And not everybody does that. And, and that was one of the things that I think it was so important that I learned from her and, and what I just say, mm, it is, you know, this is, this is me. I love it. I love it. Um, we're a little bit out of time, but I love it, Olguita. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being with us. Um, I don't know, Kirsten, if you have another question, we have like three minutes. And um, it's me. No, Olga, it's just been a pleasure to talk to you about your family, about your path, and thank you so much for spending time with us. <laughs> thank you very much, Kirsten and Annie. It's great seeing you too. <laughs>